بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وبارك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله brothers in Islam today we are very fortunate and honored to have a very well and world renowned respected Sheikh that is Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya Al Ninawi Al Husseini inshallah we are just waiting his arrival and thereafter we will commence prior to commencement a few announcements uh, Dua Shifa is requested for Hazrat Shah Abdul Aziz Sufi Saab, Hafizahullah, Hazrat Badruddin Madari Saab, Bawa Akhtar Sheikh, Shahir Ahmed, and Siraj Ali. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a full and complete Shifa. Dua Makhfira is requested for Zainul Ibrahim Ismail, Haji Sari Umar Musa of Fixburg, Haji Nur Muhammad family of Fixburg, and Muhammad Jiwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a high abode in Jannah, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. On behalf of the Habibia Suvisa Bashap in Darbar, Riverside, Durban, Kenville, our respected Hazrat Shah Abdul Aziz Sufi, Hafizahullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a full and complete Shifa. Ameen. Our Sahib Sajada, Hazrat Shah Mufti Ghulam Muhammad Sufi, Hafizahullah, would like to, with great pleasure and profound respect, that we gather here today at the HSBP Darbar in Riverside, which was the first masjid our guest honored in South Africa, Alhamdulillah in 2010. Our guest for today is a personality who needs no introduction, our honored and respected Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya al Ninawi al Husseini, who hails from the beloved household of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is a beacon of light and spirituality, and Sheikh Ninawi's teachings have illuminated hearts and minds across the world. We are truly honored to have Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya Al Ninawi Al Husseini, this Juma program. Let us open our hearts and minds to the treasure of knowledge he is about to share. May this gathering be a source of inspiration, growth, and harmony for us all. We welcome Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya to this cherished gathering. Your presence honors us as we eagerly await the pearls of wisdom you are about to bestow upon us. Jazakallah khairul jaza. Nare takbir. Nare Risalat. Has the second Adam been called? So this is just an English one. No shurut of khutbah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak. على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ورضي الله عن أزواجه وذرياته وأصحابه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا وفهما وحالا وأدبا في الدين اللهم صل على محمد وآله في الأولين وصل على محمد وآله في الآخرين وصل على محمد وآله في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين 
أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني أقم الصلاة وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك إن ذلك من عزم الأمور صدق الله مولانا العظيم الآية الكريمة It starts by obviously in لقمان عليه السلام لقمان الحكيم and Luqman al-Hakim alayhi salatu was salam is telling his son yani a advice an advice from a very wise man to his son who's just coming up to life any old person who has gone through life gained wisdom would like to pass on this wisdom if to anybody at least to his children so they can avoid his mistakes if there are any and follow that which is good because what a good father would want is the success of his children mind you if that father was a prophet of Allah or a wali of Allah such as Luqman obviously the emphasis is much bigger Luqman tells his son Ya Bunayy Oh my beloved son, Bunay is a form of saying my beloved son, an expression of love. He didn't just say, oh son. Usually there's that father commanding and it's strict. But this ayah does not talk about that kind of strictness. It actually involves the loving, oh my beloved son. And usually it indicates the end of life maybe for Sayyidina Luqman He knows maybe, maybe, or maybe that's how he always was. But maybe he was on his deathbed, passing on. And then you want to tell your son, beloved, you want to tell them this, this etc., يا بني أقيم الصلاة أو سن established الصلاة. See the ayah did not say يا بني صلي أو سن my beloved son pray. يا بني أقيم الصلاة أو my beloved son established الصلاة. As if Sayyiduna Luqman is trying to say to his son, O oh son, it's not about praying. It's about establishing the prayer. If you establish the salah to Allah, the salah will establish you by Allah. If you just pray, you might be praying, but you're not really praying. You're praying, but your heart is not praying. You're praying, but your mind is not praying. Your body is praying, but the core of you is not praying. Ya Bunaya Aqim Salah. Oh my beloved son, establish the salah. If you establish the salah, Allah establishes you. If you don't establish the salah, you have no roots, no matter how high you go in this life. One simple storm will uproot you entirely. First, Ya Bunaya, Aqim salah Then he says, Sayyidina Luqman, after that, he says, Wa'mur bil ma'roof. Now, the salah, if you establish it, what does the salah do if it's established? Not if you're a musalli. If you are established in the salah, when you establish the salah, what does it establish in you? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai. If you establish the salah, 
if you not if you just simply pray absent in, in absenteeism no no if you establish the salah allah tells us in the salah salah actually refines you one day after another day you're established and what does that mean i'm established i am present with allah i am with my lord as if every time the salah comes you are checking yourself back with allah ya allah i am yours i never was mine anyway and i am all yours i repent from what i the wrongs i've done from the last salah i seek your guidance actually not lip service in trying to be better the next salah from now till the next salah maybe i had bad plans i'm gonna correct and i ask your guidance to even do it better check in establishing the salah if you establish the salah the salah will refine you will reform you if you don't establish the salah you can utter the salah for a million years you're not with the salah الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ فِي قَاشِعُونَ Or other ones, عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ Either sahoon or khashi'oon. Al-Quran Al-Karim uses two words in connection to the salah. Some people, they're both musallis. They're both musallis. They both do salah. One فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ one, they are present in their salah. Oh, Al-Quran Al speaks about them. Those are the mu'minun, etc. The salah will refine them. The salah will purify them. The salah will educate them. The salah will elevate them. The salah will illuminate them. No doubt. No, those who are salatihim sahoon, they're not present in their salah. The Quran is talking here in a sense of condemnation. They're praying, but they're not established. They're not checking, grounding themselves to be before their Creator. If then you pray, you establish the Salah, what happens? It refines you, it reforms you. Is that good enough for Sayyidina Luqman? No. Why? Well, the point is not that you're good only on your own. That's not how things work. That's not the way of the Anbiya. That's not the way of the Awliya. That's not the way of Luqman alayhi salatu wasalam. Anyway, that's not the will of Luqman to his son alayhi salam. That's not the way of any of the prophets to their offspring or their followers anyway. Why? The issue is not just being reformed. The issue is being reforming. The issue is not being good in and of yourself. That's not the way of the prophets. The way of the prophets is the issue that you positively contribute and change your surrounding to be better. The issue is not you erect walls around yourself, but the issue is actually that you try to protect everyone and you wish good for everyone, irrespective who they are. That's why the Quran Karim speaks about, about what? Allah Azza wa Jal does not destroy a qarya wa ahluha salihun or ahluha muslihun. Ahluha muslihun. There's a difference between salih and muslih. Salih means righteous and pious in and of yourself. You're good. Muslih means after he became good within himself, he's going out there to positively contribute, to increase righteousness against all odds. That is Muslih. Salih is one thing, Muslih is another. Al-Quran Al-Kareem says to us, Allah does, which means Allah does not destroy the community. And the people of that community are not righteous. But their righteousness spreading. Muslihun. They're not reformed, but they are reforming. What does that mean? The counter positive meaning. It means what? Allah will destroy a community of the righteous. You say, what do you mean by destruction? Yani destroys a community, a family, a people, a city. 
if they are just righteous in and of themselves, reformed but not reforming. They're not positively contributing outside. What does that mean? And he destroys them. He sends them a, an earthquake and takes them out. He sends them tsunami, for example. A tsunami. He sends them what? Fires. He sends them... Uh, what, does, what does he do? Let's... Tyranny takes over them. Oppression and injustice spread among them. Change of values that are good to values that are evil, that eats them up. Leaving them, leaving their humane side to their animal side and thinking this is their enjoyment of life. Depriving them from the enjoyment of being a true worshiper of Allah and being with Allah. Turning them away from standing before Allah and weeping before him and prostrating to him as their Lord and creator and the owner of everything and filling them with the ego and the arrogance that many humans have. Oh, the wrath of Allah could come in many ways. It's not just the winds or the earthquakes or things that can happen when we mean by destruction. What more destruction you want more than if Allah deprives you from the honor of remembering him at night. You think you just overslept? No, my brother. You have not, you have been denied presence. You didn't oversleep. You were not invited to the honor of being present. You didn't just miss out. In, in Islam, we don't have missing out. You didn't have tawfiq or you didn't, you missed the blessings. You didn't miss out. The blessings were not decreed to be yours. You didn't just walk by the masjid. In a way, you were expelled from coming in. So, Al-Quran Al-Kareem is talking now from Luqman alayhi salatu wassalam telling us how we I just don't want to go over time how we what's the will of the what's the way out of this jungle of the world where the veils are becoming thicker and thicker they don't just put one layer like Al-Quran Al-Kareem said, said right ظلماتٌ بعضها one layer of thickness then they follow up with another one so you don't so the claudication the vision becomes really blurry at the beginning and then becomes no vision at all then in the darkness i'll turn up i'll turn on anything for you to see because you don't know what's around you and you don't know where you came from nor do you know where you're going to nor do you understand why because there are many layers that are over you now. And this, the vision is no longer blurry. The vision is, ink, is done entirely zero. And all I have to do instead of the light of the sun that, that comes on the entire solar system, I'll just light a little flashlight for you and show you on a small screen what life is all about. Ya bunayya aqimis salah. Oh my son. My beloved son, establish the prayers. That those that the five minutes for the Salatul Fard, that's worth to take. Give it the five minutes. Don't give it one minute. It's important to establish. If you don't, if you don't establish the Salah, you will not be established. You choose your choice. The next thing he says, Ya Bunaya Aqim is Salah, Wa Mor Bil Maruf. O son, enjoin the good. One Ha'anil Munkar, forbid the evil. To make it short, positively contribute. You should not just be reformed now that you've established the Salah, you are now re established. You are good in and of yourself. You're reformed. But that's not where you stand. You need to go and become reforming outside of your home. 
not just in your home, outside of your home, outside of your comfort zone, outside of the people who cheer for you, outside of the areas that always echo what you say. You need to go and actually do the legwork and positively contribute. Wasbir ala, and then Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Luqman says, Wasbir ala ma asabak. If you do that, after you become reformed, then you go and do positive contribution. You need to be patient on that which will befall you. And that should make you question. I am trying to be a better person on my own by establishing the salah. Then I am trying to help people become better human beings. Why should I have musibah? Be patient on the calamities that will befall you. Why should there be any calamities if you're doing good? The reason is very simple. If you reformed in and of yourself, no one's going to bother you. You close the door on your home and you pray, you do good, you give your zakah, you give your sadaqah, and you come back to your home. If you're trying to be actively, positively contributing, you're going to face tyranny, corruption, and injustice, dhulm, because that's what's out there. And if you try to actually reform tyranny, corruption, and injustice, tyranny, corruption, and injustice will set up all kinds of traps on your way and will make sure that you fail in every single at every single turn and will character assassinate you and will try to take the living breath out of you that's why luqman said ya bunayya aqim salah establish the salah because if you establish it it will establish you which is needed for you to carry the mission of the anbiya and the awliya by positively contributing and therefore calamities will befall you because you're trying to change the people and if you're trying to positively contribute to people even if it's the best message you have there will be calamities that will befall you and therefore you need to be patient in the days of muharram We can't help it for those people who have mahabba towards the awliya. Some people, mahabba, love is also a form of rizq. Love is a form of rizq. And some people, Allah did not give them lots of rizq. And I mean here the rizq of love. Some people, they are love-deprived, impoverished. That's their risk. They never bothered to ask Allah to give them more risk in love. They asked him to give them, to give them more risk in wealth, in other kinds of wealth. But in love, they never did. Not, they did not want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, at least in this aspect. Where the hadith of Tirmidhi, Imam Tirmidhi declared, declares it Hassan, where the Prophet said, Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak, wa hubba man yuhibbuk, wa hubba amali yuqarribuni ila hubbik. Ya Allah, I ask you to grant me the risk of your love. Yani you to grant me your love, the risk of your love. And to grant me to love those who love you. This is the Prophet Ya Allah, grant me more of your love. How many people make dua with that? I know we ask, Ya Allah, grant me more money. We understand that. Huh? Those who want to get married, they say, Ya Allah, grant me more, no, not more, one wife. Huh? Hey, those who want to have more degrees, Ya Allah, grant me more degrees in the university so I can... Huh? How many people do you see following the prophetic sunnah by, that the Tirmidhi narrated by asking, Ya Allah, grant me more of your love? How many? But the Prophet ﷺ does not stop here. Ya Allah, grant me more of your love. As'aluka hubbat. 
And I ask you to grant me the love of those who love you. Nabiullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Khatamun nabiyyin, imamul muttaqeen, sayyidul mursaleen, khayrul bashar. Alayhi wa alihi afdalu salaa wa azka salam is asking Allah to grant him to love those who love Allah. Those who are deprived from love are deprived from the best things in life. You can actually easily say that mahabba is synonymous with iman. Those who have no mahabba have no iman. But that's another talk. Some other time we'll talk about that aspect. Because you tell me, where's your evidence? I have evidence. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله اللهم إني أسألك حبك وحب من يحبك and the last part of the hadith سيدنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says وحب عمل يقربني إلى حبك and يا الله make me love that which is beloved to you good deed make me love that many people even when they do good deeds they don't love it. They do it because they have to do it. They're not there. They're not there. They do it because they worship Allah in a transactional method. I'm going to do this so you can give me this. They're not there. They're not there. Allah says, which means you will never reach piety until you spend from that which you love most. You have a herd of sheep. You want to give Allah the worst? You can give. Not gonna, you're not going to get there. You have food. You want to give the faqir the leftover? You're not going to get there. You have time. You want to give Allah what's left? Allah wants you to give what's right. That's what's left. <laughs> what's left? Who you give what's left to? To your creator who gave you the time anyway? What time do we finish? Two minutes. Allah. In this month of Muharram, therefore, following the sunnah of the Anbiya and the sunnah of Luqman, we cannot help but to remember the prophetic household. Alu bayti Rasulillah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In the month of Muharram, we remember especially the calamity that befell the prophetic household on the soil of Karbala, embodied no other than the direct Muhammadan grandson and Muhammadan schooled and Muhammadan raised and Muhammadan educated and Muhammadan illuminated and Muhammadan elevated Sayyiduna al-Imam Abu Abdullah al Hussein ibn Ali and wa Fatima bintu Rasulillah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam Lakin al Hussein, as you all know is a continuation of the school of the prophets Madrasatu al-Anbiya and the school of the prophets was a school of values and virtues righteousness positive contribution generosity nobility truthfulness trustworthiness faithfulness selflessness bravery etc the school of the anbiya is a school of values and virtues and al Hussein. In if we try to take a binocular, maybe a telescope, because we're we're light years away from Al Hussein. I don't mean in the physical distance. You could be in the physical distance, close. But how many people are close but far, and people who are far but close? If you we look at a telescope to the maqam of Al Hussein, trying to maybe analyze 
What was he doing on, on day, in days like this in the month of Muharram on the soil of Karbala? What was he trying to do? What is the thing that he was trying to symbolize? What was the core of his movement? If I may summarize that real quick in a minute or so, Al Imam Al Hussein was trying to prove to the whole dunya, to the whole worlds, that the Risala of the Anbiya, which is based on love, mercy, and high values and nobility and forgiveness will always prevail and the risala of shayateen which is based on evil and evil doing and based on treachery and based on deception and on khabasa on wickedness and vileness will always lose you say wait you're talking philosophy sheikh al hussein was killed by yazid well, many of the Anbiya were killed by the tyrants of their time. What are you talking about? Haq or, or you know, Rahma prevailed, uh, 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 love prevailed, uh, uh, forgiveness prevailed. They killed him. They shed the blood. In Islam, we believe the living is only one. Allahu la ilaha illa hu. Who is al Hay? The only one al hay is Allah. al hay al qayyum And therefore, since Allah is the only one who is the living, we in Islam believe in order for you to live, you have to be connected to the living. Therefore, if you're not connected to al hay al qayyum you are dead even if you're walking and talking. Because if you're not connected to Al Hay Al Qayyum, you are connected to Shaitan, and Shaitan will die, and Al Hay Al Qayyum will never die. Therefore, Al Hussein never died, actually. The birth certificate of Al Hussein was printed, if you were to say so, the day he was murdered, not the day he was born, because he was connected to Al Hay Al Qayyum. There is a big difference between those who live and those who take their life from shaitan. They take their principles from shaitan. They take their path from shaitan. Sure, al-anbiya also walk that life and that's why they're living. The tyrants will have a small pulse in history. But to the awliya after the anbiya, history belongs. Allah gave it to them. And therefore, when we talk about Sayyiduna al Hussein, we're still talking about the rahma, the mahabba, the forgiveness. You say the love and the mercy and forgiveness took over one, one over the swords of Yazid? Of course it did. Why? Is anybody mentioning Yazid or glorifying him today? Who is now talking about Al Hussein until today? Not just the people of the earth, the people of heavens are talking about Al Hussein. If the people on earth, if the people on earth don't mention him, Malaika to Sama talk about him. He's known to the people of heavens. Hadith Tabarani is known. He says, Abdullah ibn Amr, he says, no one is more beloved to the people of heavens on earth at that time more than Al Hussein. The people of heavens know Al Hussein. Forget about the people on earth. They're going to die in a few years anyway. Who cares? Like in the awliya on earth still remember Al Hussein. So do all the awliya of heavens. They're living, my beloved. They're not dead. Those who think they're dead. Those who think that tyranny won over the mercy, they're wrong. Tyranny, injustice, and corruption takes its power and value from shaitan. But rahmah, mercy, love, and forgiveness take its power from ar-Rahman. And don't ever compare a shaitan to ar-Rahman. There is no comparison there at all. A shaitan will die and will lose. And ar-Rahman is the only living. 
I'll finish with this. That's why Hazrat Rufi Sahib, our grand, great grand Sheikh Rahmatullahi Alayh, used to uphold ye annually things that have to do with what? With Sayyidina Al-Hussein, Karbala, remembering Ahlul Bayt. This is not because it was just conveniently ritualistic in India a couple of hundred years ago. No, 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 no. Sayyidina Hazrat Sufi Sahib was trying to actually connect to life by connecting to Al Hussein and connect his students to life by connecting them to Ahlul Bayt. The more you're connected to them, the more connect you're connected to life. And when you're not connected to them, you're not going to be connected to those who guide you to Allah. And only Allah is Al Hayyu Al Qayyum. So these things that were happening there that Hazrat Sufi Sahib was doing was not simply rituals of the past that have no place in the future, but in fact, they're necessary for the living soul of the believer so they can follow the example of those who were truly connected to Al Hayy Al Qayyum. This way, they also live following their footsteps. يغفر لكم ما شاء الله الحمد لله on behalf of the Habibi Asufi Sahib Basha Pid Darbar Riverside Durban Kenville we say shukran jazeel to our respected Sheikh as well as our respected Sheikh Mahmoud Khatib for honoring us here today may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and reward you both abundantly Ameen the Asada say the Ghulam Rasul Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali invites you and your family to the Milal Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yari Sharif and Uru Sharif, inshallah, taking place this weekend, commencing from Friday, the 11th August, up until the 13th of August. Kindly see notice board for further details. The Habibia Sufisa Basha Pidarbar Riverside Durban Kenville invites you and your family to the 131st Uru Sharif and the 163rd anniversary of the arrival of Hazrat Sheikh Ahmed Basha Pi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. This will take place from the 14th to the 20th of September 2023. Kindly see notice board for further details. The HSBP Institute of Learning will be hosting a fundraising dinner, inshallah, on the 8th of September. Kindly contact myself or the school for further details. We once again ask all brothers to please make us maaf and apologize for the inconvenience caused during the masjid maintenance that is currently underway with the downstairs wuzu khana. Please forgive us. Jazakallah khairu jaza. Salah will be performed outside. All mukabbiris are to be ready. Our respected Sheikh will lead us in our salah. The respected families, the Nur Muhammad and Ismail families, the nikah of Salman, uh, Nur Muhammad and Mishka Ismail will take place, inshallah, immediately after the Sunnah Salah. All parties are to please be upstairs and please be ready. Jazakallah khairul jaza. Please donate generously towards our masjid maintenance collection. Jazakallah khairul jaza. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Shahidu Alla Ilaha Illallah, Shahidu Alla Ilaha Illallah, Shahidu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Shahidu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره نستعينه سبحانه وتعالى نستهديه ونستغفره نعوذ به جل وعلا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده 
لا شيء قبله ولا شيء بعده مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وعبد الله ربه حتى أتاه اليقين صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وارض اللهم عن أزواجه وذرياته وأصحابه وأحبابه والتابعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله أحثكم وإياها على طاعته أحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته جل وعلا ومعصيته أما بعد يقول مولانا عز وجل في المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر وقال صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم كما أخرجه البخاري في صحيحه عن أنس لن, ي... لن... لن تؤمن حتى لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين وفي لفظ وماله والناس أجمعين أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر أشهد أن سيدنا محمدا صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم الشفيع المشفع في المحشر صل اللهم عليه وعلى آله أهل الفقه والنظر والعلم والأثر وعلى من بآثاره مقتفى واهتدى واعتبر عباد الله اتقوا الله العظيم حق تقواه راقبوه مراقبة من يعلم ويعتقد بأنه يراه تزودوا من دنياكم لآخرتكم عملا يحبه ويرضاه اعلموا أنه لا يضر وينفع ويعطي ويمنع ويصل ويقطع ويخفض ويرفع إلا الله واعلموا أن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه قال تعالى ولم يزل قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين أعلى يا مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه من أراد بهم غير ذلك فهده يا ربنا سواء السبيل آتي أنفسنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها آه اشف اللهم مرضانا عاف مبتلانا فك أسرانا ارحم موتانا في اللهم لنا ولوالدينا ومشايخنا ومن له حق علينا يا رب واشفي القائم على هذا المكان مولانا عبد العزيز اللهم شفاء كاملا تاما لا يغادر سقما وفقه ربي لما تحب وترضى أقم به راية السنة اللهم واكشف به إلى البدعة واغفر اللهم لنا وله واجعلنا واجمعنا على حوض نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب للدعوات وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله أقم الصلاة